I went to early vote this morning with my husband and my youngest son, who is 18 years old, and he voted in his first election. Our older son sent in his ballot via mail because he goes to Syracuse University. While I was in line, you know, you're in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I saw four of my friends that are lesbians that came over and gave me these intense hugs because they knew I was an ally. They knew I was a safe face and a safe place place for them. And then I saw another friend of mine whose granddaughter is trans, and she gave me a really, really big hug. And I realized that is who I'm out there voting for. We are voting for people that the Trump administration wants to beat down. And I will fight with every fiber of my body to stand up for marginalized people. And that's the difference. That's the difference in difference in both sides of the ticket. Pumps, what what do you have for us today? Well, as it is the last day of what could be democracy, the election is finally here. So I wanted to highlight the different closing arguments by the candidates, because I don't think there's a clearer contrast in candidates that we've ever seen in U.S. history. So let's start with Trump's closing argument. Obama, he didn't do that. He got far less votes the second time than he won. And he's a major divider. I watched him the other night. I mean, he's a very divisive guy. I've always said that. He is a very divisive guy. And his wife, what's, I've always been so nice. Ooh, she was hitting me. She was hitting me, Michelle. She was hitting me. That wasn't nice. I've always been nice, but they're dividers, I'll tell you right now. We're not going to stand. Dividers are no good. He's a highly overrated man, I'm telling you that. The projection is breathtaking. What amazes me is we've had two presidents since Barack Obama. He is jealous because Barack Obama is all the things he's not. And Michelle Obama is a fabulous speaker. And he is just, he cannot move past the past. He cannot look forward. He is not talking about what he can do for the American people. He's talking about Barack and Michelle Obama. Well, because they hurt his feelings and everything with him is about a grievance. He has no plan. He has no policy. He's surrounded by sociopaths. He is literally surrounded by crazy people. There are no guardrails. His campaign is in a complete death spiral. And when I was waiting in line this morning, I was just sickened when I looked around at the lines and there were more men in line this morning than women. And I just thought, how did they do it? How did they bend themselves? Say, I'm a proud American. I stand for freedom. I stand for equality. I stand for liberty. And they march in there and vote for this pathetic, thin-skinned, disturbed, convicted felon that attempted a coup. It's just, it, it, even hear his, hearing his voice this morning makes me sick. It really is breathtaking. I can't wrap my head around it, but I have to accept that, like, probably 80 million Americans are all in on him for whatever their reason are, is. It, it blows my mind. I cannot imagine doing it. He's a temper tantrum waiting to happen. But let's contrast that with Vice President Kamala Harris's closing argument. We will cut taxes for workers, for middle-class families and small businesses. We will lower health care costs, including the cost of home care for seniors. Because on the issue of health care, I absolutely believe access to health care should be a right and not just a privilege of those who can afford it. And to anyone out there watching this while we're here who still is trying to get rid of the Affordable Care Act and take us back to the days when insurance companies could deny people with pre-existing conditions, well, Philly, you know what I'm about to say. We are not going back. We are not going back. We're not going back. You know, she's so good at this, Mm -hmm. and I am so sick of a lot of Americans that when you talk, when the election comes up, 
they say, oh, I'm just not a big Kamala person. I'm like, oh, so you're the, um, I want to stage a coup d'etat, take a shit in the Capitol, beat up on cops, and watch a guy simulate a blowjob to a microphone person. Like, you know immediately when somebody tries to make this about personality that they are a Trumper. You know they're morally defective. You immediately know this woman has ran a flawless campaign. She is qualified. But the sexism, both men that are sexist and women that suffer from internalized misogyny and just the Fox News syndrome mm -hmm. and the stupidification of America and the cruelty that runs in these people's veins, they need to come to terms with it. You said that you have to accept that 80 million people are going to vote for him. I will never, ever, ever accept that that's okay. I will never stop fighting for marginalized people. My son recently wanted to switch schools and go to a school where I would have to sign an anti-gay, anti-trans document. And I told my son, no, I will not sign it. I will not co-sign onto bigotry, especially in your name, especially in your name, Roman. I will not be a part of systemic cruelty and racism and homophobia in your name because I love you too much and I love all of these other people too much to be that person. And I'm so sick of Americans that can't stand up for other Americans. It grosses me out to the core of my being. And it just is so unsettling when you see this man speak, how disturbing he is. And then you hear this woman speak about helping people that need Healthcare and all of these alleged Christians won't vote for that. They won't vote to help poor people receive health care because they're entitled and they like the cruelty. They like that we get it. We're special. We have all the answers to the universe. Fuck all these poor gay people. Fuck all these poor black people. It's disgusting. It is disgusting. And speaking of cruelty, Kylie, play the next clip. Oh, those Penn State guys, I wanted them to wrestle the migrants. I told, you know, the UFC, Dana White. Oh, they, they killed me in this. I told Dana, you know, to set up your league of champions, unbelievable best fighters in the world, and a migrant league. At the end, I want the migrant to go against the champion, and I think the migrant might actually win. That's how nasty some of these guys are. But I don't know. I doubt that. I tell you, I felt very comfortable with those big Penn State wrestlers. Pumps, I'm like a toddler. If I don't get sleep, I am so cranky. That's why I'm so excited to tell you and the listener about Beam's Dream Powder. It is a science-backed, healthy, hot cocoa for sleep and a total game changer. There is nothing I love more than great sleep, and the cocoa tastes excellent. It is so decadent, Pumps. Other sleep aids can cause next day grogginess, but Dream contains a powerful all-natural blend of reishi, magnesium, L, theanine, opigenin, and melatonin to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. Listener, right now, Beam is offering our listeners exclusive early access to their cyber cell. This is the biggest sell of the year, and our listeners can shop it early. Get up to 50% off when you visit shopbeam.com slash IHIP. To try Dream for the lowest price of the year, head over to shopbeam.com slash IHIP and get yours before they sell out. That's shopbeam slash IHIP for up to 50% off. Pumps, I really look forward to the fall season because I love sweater weather. And I always like to get a few new cashmere pieces, but they can be so expensive. And that's why I love Quince. They have this fabulous Mongolian sweater that starts at just $50. Quince products are amazing. I love their leather jackets and their soft denim. And all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. How are they able to do that? They do that by partnering directly with top factories and cutting out the cost of the middleman, which passes the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, 
ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices. And of course, premium fabrics and finishes for that luxury fill in every piece. Listener, get cozy in Quince's high quality wardrobe essentials. Go to quince.com slash IHIP news for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash IHIP news to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince dot com slash IHIP news. I mean, I saw, you know, before he showed up to his rally, which was half filled, he's showing WWE videos <laughs> on the Jumbotron. But what what is he talking about? He wants to have Penn State wrestle Migrants, people that are seeking asylum, which he doesn't understand. Right. He thinks that means Hannibal Lecter because he's so stupid. But what this cruelty. And when you look at the breakdown of his voters, they're all religious. It's just it's it's there is just this cancer in this country where people are for this cruelty. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I'm a personality voter. I'm not a Kamala person. Shut the fuck up. I mean, it's just like, that's what you want to watch. And I think they do. You hear his audience. Yeah. They like that shit. They saw during his administration when they separated toddlers from their parents. And that wasn't career ending for him. They are tripling down on the cruelty. And it is so abhorrent. And I will never, ever, ever say that's okay. Because it is not okay to treat other human beings like they're subhuman. And that's what he does. He has labeled immigrants as animals. And all of his Christian voters are like, oh, yeah, they're animals. And it's like, no, they're human beings. They are human beings. You Christian fuck. They are human beings. It's disgusting. I am so sick of the Republican Christian Nationalist Party that values profit over human lives. It is such a moral shortcoming. And on this election day, and I hope that she wins, I have never been more disgusted with half of the American population. And I hope it's less than that than I am on this day, that we are arriving at this day and it's a coin flip. Yeah, that that's what's so amazing about it is he's talking about gladiator style migrants versus professional wrestlers and it's like we always say recreational cruelty now they're adding cruelty for sport and it is disgusting and speaking of misogyny and disrespect jd vance with his last swan song vice presidential candidacy speech said the following about the vice president of the united states in two days we are going to take out the trash in washington dc and the trash's name is kamala harris can you even imagine what this, European nations are thinking about that? He is a presidential candidate, a vice presidential candidate, and he called the sitting vice president trash after he cried around about Biden's apostrophe gate on garbage. It is the hypocrisy is enraging. J.D. Vance is a total sociopath made of tofu. He will meld into whatever anybody wants him. This is my biggest pet peeve I've decided about people. People that don't have a backbone. People that don't have the moral fortitude to stand up for something. J.D. Vance had moral clarity at one point. He saw the dangers of what Trump was. And then here he is just totally in the tank thirsty for power just for the now. There's no thought to play the tape through as to how does this country evolve under these policies, which it wouldn't evolve, it would devolve. And it's just, it's disgusting how people can cherry pick what they want to stand up for. And they can say, oh, I like this part, but not this part. The, the overall thing from the moment Donald Trump descended on the elevator in 2016 to now, there has not been one good thing that has come of it. I can't think of one positive thing that has come from this other than you have families that are mad at each other. Um, he basically drove the country into the ground, which Joe Biden, thank God, had the experience to build it back up to where it is now. And then they're all crying around like America's 
under in, we're being invaded. What, what are you talking about? Our cities are under siege. Trump himself says America is this heaping pile of garbage all the time. So it's no wonder that he would say that about Kamala. They're the most sexist ticket I've ever seen in my lifetime. I've never seen such unbridled sexism and they're proud to wear it. The homophobia, the racism, Jesus Christ, the racism is so appalling. And you have people that would think that they are decent people, but they're only decent to the people in their inner circles. The minute they get outside of their homes, they don't care about humanity. And that is the cancer. That is what will remain after Trumpism is the moral depravity that this man has twisted millions of Americans in. And it's just hopefully tomorrow, this is a much more uplifting podcast. But when I woke up this morning and I went to vote, I was so excited. And when I hugged those gay friends of mine and my son looked at me and he said, mom, I know why you won't sign documents like that. Because he saw the fear in those gay Americans' hearts and minds and the relief they felt when they saw a safe person in the voting line that was going to vote for them. And my son got it. He got that lesson right then and there. And I will die defending that right for those people to not have more than me, but to have the same, to feel safe, secure, not discriminated against, and treated as an equal. And that's why I have always voted on this side of politics. That's why I have always been this blue dot in this sea of red Christian, I'm all for profit, photoshopped Trump, photoshopped white Jesus crowd, because I see right beneath all of their posturing about all their religiosity and all their, their righteous indignation, right beneath it. They don't give a fuck about sick people. They don't give a fuck about poor people. They don't give a fuck about immigrants. They don't give a fuck about minorities. They sure as fuck don't give a shit about gay people. They'll act like it when they're at a party. Oh yeah, I've got a gay friend, but then they march their asses right into the voting booth and they could give two shits. And I am so sick of it, which is why the name of our podcast is I've had it because I've had it with the breathtaking hypocrisy from many of the people in this community. It makes me literally sick. I'm like you. I hope that tomorrow is a better day. And that's why we want everybody to get out and vote, vote blue up and down the ticket. And let's cross our fingers. Let's give Kamala some political capital and she needs to go use it the way Trump would use it. Oh, go right. use that political capital and put in uh, some checks and balances over the Supreme Court. Get rid of the relic, the absolute disgrace electoral college, because we are a center left country. The last multiple popular votes have proven that. And we have these crazy fever pitch minority that's like, oh, we're the silent majority. No, no, you're a fever pitch, obnoxious, immoral minority. And I believe that we are a center left country and we need to make our voices heard and we need to give Kamala Harris all of the political power to go in and fuck them up. And I mean, fuck them up with legislation, not some gladiator bullshit, but you get in there and you fuck them up and you go full progressive because that is truly at the core of all of these urban areas. People that live in diversity see it as enriching their lives. And that's where all the money comes from anyway. Right. All right. Another uplifting episode on this election day. And we will see you guys maybe later today if we're feeling ambitious. It's so. Uh...